Hallelujah. Come with me, please, to Acts chapter 4, verses 4, 13 through 20. Acts chapter 4, verses 13 through 20. Give you a second or two. That's a wonderful chapter uh, to read. Acts chapter 4, verses 13 through 20. The Word of God reads, Now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John, what was Isaiah talking about uh, just a while ago? Uh, the boldness. Alright? And I lost my place. I said Acts 4, 13. Now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were unlearned, and ignorant men, they marveled and they took knowledge of them. They, they took knowledge of them that they had been with Jesus. And beholding the man which was healed standing with them, they could say nothing against it. But when they had commanded them to go, out, go aside out of the council, they conferred among themselves, saying, What shall we do to these men? For they indeed, a notable miracle has been done by them, is manifest to all them that dwell in Jerusalem, and we cannot deny it. But that it spread no further among the people, let us straightly threaten them, that they speak henceforth to no man in this name. What is going on today in this nation, as we're speaking right now? Verse 18, And they called them and commanded them not to speak at all, nor teach in the name of Jesus. But Peter and John answered and said unto them, Whether it be right in the sight of God to hearken unto you more than unto God, judge ye. For we cannot but speak the things which we have seen and heard. Boldness. I spoke last week on encouragement. Now comes the time to be bold concerning the Word of God. I didn't say arrogant. I said bold. And we're going to get into that. There comes a time in each one of our lives that we, we must stand up for what we believe. We now see this in the early stages of the first church. But we're also seeing it in the last stages of the church today, right now. We see this in Peter and John. These two men were brought before a council to give an account for what God had done. And as we see men coming against God, but we also see men standing for God. Not with arrogance again. Too many times Christians become arrogant and they run more people away because of their arrogance. We do not have to be arrogant. God is quite capable of doing what God needs to be done. All we have to do is be the mouthpiece and allow the Holy Spirit to flow through us. And that living water will water the dryness of other people's heart in order for them to come to the living water. I do not be in, believe in being arrogant, but I do believe in, believe in not compromising what I say I believe. But before I can say that, I have to know what I believe in and believe in what I say I know. I hope you understand what I'm saying. There are many people who are saved, and I say amen by the blood, but they really don't know too much about Jesus. That's where Bible, I'm talking about godly Bible study. Not Bible study that's based on somebody's opinion. On somebody trying to get control of a group of people. I do not believe in that. I believe the Bible, uh, whether it's Sunday school or home church or whatever, it needs to be led by godly people who they call by God to teach the Word of God. Amen? And I cut right through the red tape. I need help, and the help that I need is truth. Amen? I need somebody to tell me the truth because I need truth. <coughs> well, let's get back to the word of boldness. Verse 13 says, the council members were amazed. Verse 13 says, now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant 
unlearned of what and ignorant of what. Too many times today we put so much emphasis on education that we lose sight of the fact that education is good and is needed, but what we need more so is people who have been in the presence of God. And you might say, well, how can we be in the presence of Jesus today? It's very simple. Get on your face and start crying out to Jesus. And Jesus is right there with us. Can I have an amen? Amen. 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 Jesus is not a God that's so far away we can't reach Him. Jesus is right here today with us. Now, if you want both to see what God has done today, then go out and share what God has done. Amen? Now, that's very important. Peter and John were just ordinary men. Let's say just people. How many here are just people? You know, I'm just a person. Amen? Uh, you can look and see. I don't pass for 25,000 people. Amen? But I pastor what God brings in here because we want to see them blessed by God and to be touched by God in order for them to respond to the calling that God has got on their life. They were common people. Well, I'm common. I don't know how much more common you can get than me. I'm just me, and I'm not trying to put a face on. What you see is what you got. If you're looking for something else, you ain't got. Amen. And I do drive a pickup truck. Hallelujah. But yet, these ordinary men spoke with authority and knowledge. They spoke with confidence and freedom. Let's say this. The Holy Ghost was showing through them. There's power. There's power in the Word of God. Amen. And when you start quoting the Word of God, Start living the Word of God and breathing the Word of God. There's something that's going to show through. Today I believe the church needs a gift, a spiritual gift. We all need the spiritual gift that God says we can have. But today in the last days, and I don't know how long the last days are. And I don't really care. Because Jesus is in them, so it doesn't make me any difference. If He comes tomorrow, I'm ready to go. But by the way, I'm ready to go right now. And if He waits a hundred years, yeah, I'll be gone anyway. But the Holy Ghost was showing through the men. The Holy Spirit showed up. And you know something happens when the Holy Spirit shows up. Something starts to take place in our hearts. There's a work of God in our hearts when the Holy Spirit shows up. And you know that when you're in the presence of God, you cannot remain the way you are. You might say, well, I've been saved for forever how many years. That's a big amen. But every day is a growing experience in Jesus. Every day, every day is a new adventure in Jesus. And when you get into the Word of God and you get around Spirit-filled people, you get around people who love Jesus, there's a churning that's going on. And that churning, let's say, is addictive, if I might say it that way. Because if you get around holy, if you get around people who believe in Jesus, who's filled with the Spirit, and you start studying and talking about the Word of God, there's something that starts to churn. And what's starting to churn, I'll simplify it real quick. Whatever you were, you get ready to not be whatever you were because the Holy Ghost is starting to fill you. And the more that God fills you, the more that you get out. And the more that you get out, the more pliable you are to the Word of God. And the more pliable you are to the Word of God, the more that God is going to work through you. Amen. 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 Now, I believe that. You see, I'm not being arrogant. I don't have to. I don't have to be arrogant when we go to prisons. I don't have to be arrogant when we go on mission trips. Me and Brother Mickey don't have anything to prove. We don't prove anything. We bring in Jesus in. Amen. We was in prison uh, in January of this year. And, I, and 16 men made professions of faith in, in, a, in a prison in Honduras. I don't know how many was real. I don't know how many of y'all are real. Because your salvation is based upon your personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Not on me. Amen? Amen. I depend on no one but the Lord. And in, in, in January of that year, I got a great blessing too of this year. We was able to baptize in a local river. And I got pictures outside if you want to take a look at it. It's exciting to me. 
Here it is in the beginning. Here it is, January 4, I believe. And I'm in the water, and the water feels good. Over here we had our trees. In fact, Mike had to go fix one of our pipes that busted while we was in the hot earth. But but God moved. God moves. You just stand up and open your mouth. But remember this, you've got to have something in here when you stand up and open your mouth. Amen. Get into the Word of God. You see, you stand up for God and God will stand up for you. And that's a fact. Amen. Amen. I had a heart attack this past August. Y'all know it all. Amen. If you don't, well, it did. That was the best thing that could have happened to me. You say, what? I said, before I walked 40 foot, I was out of breath. Now me and Nikki walks a half a mile. I come back in, get out, get toy out, and we praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. You see, God knows what we need. Sometimes God is working, applying our heart, working in our lives, and it don't feel good. How many of y'all going to get on your knees and pray for a heart attack right now? <laughs> That's against all odds. I wouldn't do it neither, but it happened to me. You see, God knew what I needed. God sent somebody to take me there. We had a prayer meeting while they were working on it. Y'all know that? Backed up by Brother Mickey because he was in there. We had prayer before they rolled me out. We had prayer before they started sticking that thing up my leg or whatever they do with it. But you see, God was working in this body in order for me to have the breath to do what we're doing right now. Amen. I had a man ask me, would you be interested in going to Honduras every January? He said, we'll finance it. We'll finance it. So church, pray for me. Amen. Amen. Pray for our dear too. Hallelujah. Amen. But they were personal witnesses of everything that they spoke about. What is God doing in your life? Right now. Has God put you back together? Has God did something? I know Penny, I know Steve had a, a liver transplant. That's a miracle, amen? amen? How many of us have got miracles? I know Brother Philip, back when he was a young man, he had an accident. He's a walking miracle. I know that, amen? amen. How many of us have had miracles in your life? Start telling people about what God's done for you. Lord. Amen? Lord. What has God done for others that you witnessed to? Me and I never prayed for people who was giving up. I remember we was called way back, back when we were ministering down south. We was called to go go to uh, uh, Earl K. Long Hospital. It was a was a uh, was a, a public hospital in Baton Rouge. He said a guy a guy was operated on. They opened him up and they looked at him. They sewed him back up. They said, "Hey, nothing we can do for him. Would you go pray for him?" So me and another guy, we we went to Baton Rouge. Got my little oil. I carried my little oil with me. Amen. And and we anointed him. We anointed him. Do you know something? He got out. He, he got out. And he come to our church. He got saved. He got baptized. And he was one of the greatest witnesses that we had at Lee Valley Baptist Church. His name was Knute Warren Sr. God can do and will do miracles. He'll do it in your life. In fact, God is working right now in some of your lives. Right now, I know he's working in my life. I'm excited. What you're excited about? I'm excited that God's here. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Lord. Something takes place when you are in the presence of God. Amen. The glory of Jesus will shine upon and through you. And you know something? You will know when you when you when you when you prayed up. Can I say it that way? When when you prayed up and you seek in the face of the Lord, you know demons can't stick around you. They got to go. Amen. The right, the council members were amazed. And they asked the question, what should we do? Was the council's question. Verse 16. What shall we do to these men? For they indeed, a noble miracle has done by them, been done by them. It's manifest to all them that dwell. I want you to know that all, all them that dwell in your room knew about this miracle. What should we do? A situation came up that had to be addressed and simply because of their disbelief in Jesus. 
they believed in Jesus, they'd have been shouting hallelujah. But now they're seeing things happen. You see, if they believed in Jesus, this would not have been a problem. They couldn't deny, but let's get back to the facts of the reality. They couldn't deny what actually had just taken place. They couldn't deny it. God's word is moving now like wildfire. People were hearing, people were seeing, and people needed what they were seeing, and people needed what they were hearing. Our families today need to hear the word of God. Our children today need to hear the word of God. All those little things they work with, they need to have the Bible in it. Let them start reading the Bible at a very early age. And by the way, I'm so excited about my grandson. We're going to baptize him right here. They come up for Easter. We're going to baptize him right here. But I'm so proud of this. Let me share this with you. Man, you know, me and I don't like any kind of stuff on TV that 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 we don't we don't like cursing. Okay, now can I put it like that? Amen. So, in fact, we don't like it. We don't put up with it. All right, here we are. I got Inez, myself, my grand, my, my, my daughter, my granddaughter, and my at that time he was seven years old. Gerald Blake Ford. Isn't that something? Gerald Blake Ford. Amen. His daddy is named Rusty Ford, too, by the way. That's a true name. That's his name. Okay. They are on the pallet, and I'm up there, and 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 and, and Inez had a movie coming on, and they had one curse word in this movie, okay? And then we didn't go no further, by the way. And before Inez could turn it off, you know what this little seven-year-old boy did? He got up and said, he is not listening to this and walked out. <laughs> Come on, God is moving in our kids. Amen. God is moving in our kids. Amen. God is lifting up a generation that's going to be bold for him because they won't put up with what's normal. Today, you can't hardly get a movie. And I'm not finding fault with anybody, but I am finding fault. You can't hardly turn the movie on. Turn the movie on and today cursing, you got a problem. Well, I'll say this, turn it off and you won't have a problem. Amen. Amen. Now, I'm serious. I'm proud of my little grandson. But the miracles were the work of the resurrected Christ. Now here come the lies of the devil. And what's happening today, right now in our society, right now, verse 17 says, but that it, they, they told Peter and John, look now, but that it spread no further among the people, let us straightly threaten them that they speak henceforth to no man in his name. Right now, you can't what? You can't have a cross anywhere. You can't, you can't pray in Jesus' name. You can't mention God anymore. Arthur. What's going on right now in our nation? What's going on in our military right now? The United States military was one of the greatest powers on the face of this earth right now. You can't even mention Jesus. And somebody had to come up and tell me something else, well, read about it and see what's going on. But the lies of the devil... But one thing we do know, the truth is the truth. Amen? Amen? The truth is the truth. God healed me of a heart attack. I fell in, in, in August of 93, 16 feet, building a new church down south. Hit the slab. God healed me. God caught me. All right? I don't have any metal in me. I'm okay. No broken bones. I know what God has done for me. You see, I want to share that with people. If God could catch me when I fell that far, and, and, and hit the slab, don't you think he can catch your marriage? Amen. Don't you think he can catch your wayward child? Don't you think he can catch your financial problems? Don't you think he can catch you in whatever situation, condition, or circumstance you find yourself in? The answer is yes. He can catch you right where you're at. Yes. Surrender to him. Yes. You can't change the truth. But you know what? If you tell the truth, you can tell the truth for a hundred years if you live that long. The same thing you said. But when you start telling a lie, you got to try to remember what you just said. I say this. Why do I have to try to remember what I just said? Just say the truth and the truth will always be with you. Amen. Amen. To me, it's simple. I'm, a, I'm an ignorant man according to these Pharisees and Sadducees. I'm an uneducated man. I tell you what, I'd rather be educated in Jesus than anything else. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Give Him glory. But you can't change the truth. They can't change the truth, but they'll try to stop it from spreading. Peter and John and the other apostles were well known at this time. How many others? How many others would want healing and deliverance? How many others would want their children healed? 
How many others needs all kind of different types of healing? We need it. We need it. Amen? I'm excited. The needs were great then, and the needs are great today. Don't speak or teach, they said, don't speak or teach about Jesus. That's what Peter and John was told. Now look, we're going to let you go. Now they ain't letting them go nowhere because there ain't nothing they know about. It. The Holy Ghost is in it. Amen? Amen. But now look, look. We, you, we, you go, go and they go now. We don't want nothing more to do with you. But we're warning you now, don't talk about this Jesus. Don't talk about this Jesus. Oh, um, once you've been touched by Jesus, you can't help but talk about Jesus. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. When I fell 13 to 16 foot, and when I had a heart attack, when I had to wreck, and there's so many other things I can say, what am I going to talk about? What am I going to talk about? I'm sure the world ain't going to talk about the government. I'm sure the world ain't going to talk about cutting down trees. And I'm sure ain't going to talk about planting the garden. I'm going to talk about what Jesus has done for me. Amen? I'm going to tell them, hey, look, this is what Jesus has done for me. Praise God. If it wasn't Jesus, I wouldn't be here. Or if it, if it wasn't for Jesus, I did, would be pushing me around in a wheelchair. Amen. i got to push her now, but it's going to be okay because she's getting well. Amen. 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 I wouldn't be able to go through an airport with a went through an airport. I'd be in there and then because I'd be nothing but metal. God heal me and God touch me. What else do I want to talk about? Amen. What else? Jesus, I had trouble breathing and I couldn't run too far or walk too far without being out of breath. I had a heart attack. God took that heart attack to heal me now. I feel like I'm 71 years old now. Before I felt like I was 72. See, God is moving in me. Amen? That was a little humor. I feel good. What was that? That was a song somewhere. I feel good. I feel little richer or something. I don't know. Some beat my or something. Uh, I grew up in that time period, by the way. Fast domino and all that. I, I did. I did. Amen. Huh? Les Brown? No, I don't know. I thought, I thought Les Brown had an orchestra, but that's okay. But 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 he says, I feel good all over. I've been washed in the blood of the Lamb. I feel good all over. Amen. You know, these disbelievers, but not deniers. Let me explain this. They saw the miracle. This man was over 40 years old. 40 years old. He gave an account for himself. For himself. They saw the miracle. They didn't believe in Jesus, but they saw the miracle and they could not deny the miracle. They tried to bargain with these men of God. They replied. Verse 19. Thank you, Father. But Peter and John answered and said unto them, Whether it be right in the sight of God to hearken unto you more than unto God judge ye. Verse 20. For we cannot but speak the thing which we have seen and heard. Speak the thing that you have seen and you have heard. There is no authority apart from God. Without God, just what do we have? I ask that question right now. Without God, just what do we have? Yes. What do you ask? Yes. You know, my personal testimony is simply this. I cannot stop telling others about what has just taken place. Now, I want to share this with you. Been going to prison with Becky, we go to prison every few years. You don't know how many prisoners have said this. To me and Becky, I'm sure. If I wasn't in here, I would be on the streets and more likely I'd be dead right now. If I'd have kept doing what I was doing, death was facing me right in the face. But I'm praying to God because I'm in here. And I'm praying to God that He sent you in here. Amen? Amen. Amen. Don't, don't ever say what God can't do. But start praising Him for what He can't do. The Bible says, Luke 1, 37, chapter 1, verse 37, says, For with God all things are possible. All things. 
can't stop telling others about what had just taken place. It happened on that day. It will, and it is going to happen on any more days until Jesus comes back. See, His presence is going to be felt. The question is not when will it happen, but rather do we want to become a part of it. Like Inez said, we share it here. People are going to get saved. People are going to get saved. Now, do you want to be part of it? Is the question. You might say, well, what can I do? What are you doing it right now? You're in church. You're praising God. You're listening to the Word of God. Don't listen to me, by the way. Let the Word of God saturate your heart. You see, I need the blood of Jesus, too. But the question is, do you want to be part of it? Or do you want to get further away from it? You get further away from it, you can become more miserable. You get closer to it, and you're going to start having fun. Amen. amen. So, I say amen. In amen. Jesus' name, amen. amen.